about all things motor racing usually it's just three blokes chatting all sport motors all things motorsport but today um it's just me um alex is here on the radio in the studio of radio Taliana. welcome uh, fortunately uh daniel is uh, sick and uh ivan is still on the road uh this time coming back from one raceway near canberra um, after a weekend of ups and downs, uh, let, I'm going to leave it at that. He will explain more next week, I'm sure, as he wrapped up the Formula RX-8 championship. Um, in other motorsport news, it was a massive weekend, and I'm actually really, really looking forward to this show. Um, so I'm going to do my best on my own for today. But um, yeah, it'll be fun nonetheless, as we had some cracking motorsport action around the world but also down under was pretty cool too so um let's kick things off straight away with the t-shirt that i'm wearing uh formula one as ferrari have won again back-to-back uh race victories for the scarlet ferrari um and i can't believe that they've won two in a row for starters it is unbelievable this time was a different driver though charlotte claire won in the us of a at austin uh, this week, it was Carlos Sainz in Mexico. Probably the next Mexican, uh, you know, so the biggest Mexican driver, even though he's not Mexican, he's Spanish, but obviously Mexico, they speak Spanish there. So um, maybe after Sergio Perez gets kicked out, hopefully um, Perez will be, sorry, Carlos Sainz will be their new favorite. Um, he got a lot of love and attention over the weekend as he took victory ahead of um, Lando Norris, who wasn't meant to finish th- uh, second. Uh, it was meant to be Charles Leclerc for another 1-2 for Ferrari, but unfortunately his tyres gave way and uh, made a b- mistake, which almost ended in tears, uh, but only just losing the one spot to Lando Norris, which I'm kind of happy about in a way. Like, obviously, I'd love to see Ferrari have another 1-2. Who wouldn't, especially in this studio, on this, on this radio station? However, um, it just makes the gap for the championship uh, a lot better having Lando Norris finish as high as possible uh, with a struggling Max Verstappen. And um, the two, once again, uh, were really close with each other. A bit too close at some times. Um, actually, on the same lap, interestingly, I believe it was lap 10. Uh, we'll go through, obviously, what happened first of all. On lap one, there was a incident between Yuki Tsunoda and uh, Alex Albon. Just days after uh, Yuki has been announced that he will do a test for Red Bull post-championships, post-Abu Dhabi in a couple months' time. That in itself is also very interesting, and we won't, we don't know too much about that, so we're not going to go too deep into that, but it could be a sign of things to come. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and yeah, he made contact, unfortunately. He was a bit ambitious around the outside of Turn 1. There always usually is one driver that goes around the outside of Turn 1 at Mexico, and just doesn't pull it off. Last year, it was home favorite Sergio Perez, who tried to go for the lead. Uh, this time, Yuki Tsunoda was a bit ambitious, trying to go around the outside of about two or three cars. And yeah, unfortunately, clipped the still unlucky Alex Albon, who never seems to make his own mistakes, yet doesn't finish races. Um, even when he does make mistakes, uh, like in Austin, when he did a 360 in practice, I believe it was, or qualifying, um, he was totally fine doing that. But yeah, unfortunately, his luck of, sorry, his bad luck of form continues over the last couple races. And um, yeah, he didn't get past turn four, three. Anyway, yeah, had a long restart. Obviously, there's a lot of carbon fiber on the track. So safety car took a while. Um, before that, though, before or well, during the incident, obviously they let the guys race for about half a lap, and uh, Carlos Sainz did grab the lead, but it was a bit illegal. He gave it back to Max Verstappen, who started alongside him in P2. Um, so Max led at the restart, and Carlos Sainz didn't waste any time. He knew that passing Verstappen would be, would be difficult, so he took the first opportunity to do so and grabbed the lead at turn one on the restart, and no one caught him. 
after that. Same, similar thing as what Charles Leclerc did in Austin, got the lead from Lando and Max and just took off. And like we said last week on the show, it's very refreshing to see a Ferrari get the lead and not be vulnerable still and actually take off. And I'm sure Lewis Hamilton will be very excited about that opportunity next year to do what he used to do at Mercedes. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit as there's a bit of a Ferrari Lewis Hamilton connection over the weekend. Um, so yeah, a really confident, uh, you know, building a lot of confidence to say that Ferrari can hold a lead and, and, and win a race um, in control. And usually they're their own worst enemy. And we've seen a couple of times over the last couple of years, even this year, a little bit with strategy toward the start of the year where, yeah, they shot themselves in the foot and, um, yeah, took themselves out of contentions for race wins. Um, so, yeah, nice to see that that's under control now. They've done it twice in a row. So it's no fluke. Um, but, yeah, back to the restart. And um, things got chippy at turn four, where after Carlos got the lead, Max and Lando were side by side into turn four. And uh, Lando was, I can't say op opportunistic. Um, going around the outside at turn four of Max Verstappen, but he was ahead at the corner. Now, we discussed this last week um, regarding, you know, who's ahead of the corner, pushing people off the track, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this time, Max Verstappen got everything he deserved last week, but this week. Um, he drove Lando Norris completely off the track at turn four, forcing Lando to cut turn five. He didn't give the position back to Max, and I think that's valid. Um, he did slot behind Carlos Sainz because at one point he was leading. So he gave the spot back to Carlos Sainz, but yeah, didn't give it back to Max. And Max at the very next section of the corner uh, of the track, a couple corners later, dive bombed into a corner where you're not really meant to overtake. And he proved it. Com went completely off track himself, almost took Lander out of the race. Um, and for each of those incidences within 20 seconds of each other, he got a 10 second penalty each. So 20 seconds worth of penalties all up. And obviously he wasn't happy about it. Um, but then even post the penalties, he didn't really have the pace to keep up with any of them. Um, just in, in terms of timing, Lando, you know, gained a lot of pace over the course of the race. And we'll get into that in a moment. And um, yeah, that really saw the end of that battle once Max pitted. Obviously for the first round of pit stops, he had to wait in the pit bay for 20 seconds, which for me was awesome. And, um, yeah, it's now made the championship a lot tighter, a lot more competitive. And especially in the Constructors' Championships, which we'll get to later, there is a new second place holder. And I'll just point at the logo of who that will be, and we'll discuss that later. So if you're watching on YouTube or any of our social media platforms, you know what I just pointed at. Obviously, I'm wearing a Ferrari shirt, so it's Ferrari. Um, anyway, we'll get into that a bit later on, but it's really good news to see that Ferrari ahead of Red Bull now. So um uh speaking of Ferrari, um next year driver Lewis Hamilton finished in fourth. Um he had a bit of a quiet race, honestly just battled with Russell for most of it. Um as he saw his future car drive off into the distance. I'm pretty sure well Charles Leclerc had a after he made that mistake with the tires overheating and almost binning uh the whole car. Uh, they made a pit stop to do the fast lap of the race on a pair of soft tires, and he did that on the last lap. Um, and they had enough of a gap to Lewis to do that pit stop and still finish 10 seconds up the road. So very impressive stuff from the Scarlet Ferrari, as well as the McLaren as well. McLaren, uh, Lando Norris was in second at the time, so they were well up the road. Um, obviously, Hamilton finished fourth, followed by Russell. Uh, Russell did try to hold off. Um, his future ex-teammate for as long as possible, but I think with about six laps to go, Hamilton got him. Max Verstappen, as we said before, it finished in P6, which is huge implications on the drivers' championship. Yeah, I can't, I can't stress this enough, but how big of a result this is for the championship! Like, it's quite a big swing. Um, the gap now is only forty-seven points, so. You know, the difference in points, so uh, Lando would have got 18 points, I believe it was. Uh, let me quickly just double-check that. Yeah, 18 points, and Max got eight. So 10-point swing. 
in the championship. Well, and while that doesn't sound huge, obviously the gap being 47, it was 57. So, you know, you cut it in fifths, I guess you can say. Um, and there are still four races to go, I believe. So there's still opportunities. And, you know, an incident here, more penalties there. Um, you know, looking at the schedule real quick, you got Brazil, Vegas, Qatar, and I think just Abu Dhabi after that. Uh, let me just really double check. Yep. So four races to go, Brazil, Vegas, Qatar, and Abu Dhabi. At tracks like Vegas, you can't run some off the road and get away with it. There are walls everywhere. Um, so Max is is on the back foot, I would say. Uh, the Red Bull is not what it was, or other cars are getting, or other cars aren't what they were, and are getting quicker. Um, crazy to think that, you know, Verstappen. Apparently, he didn't have a pole, so he started. Um, he didn't have a pole position since Imola. Sorry, he still doesn't have a pole position since Imola. Crazy. Crazy, crazy to believe that that's that was so long ago. That was round seven, and we just did round twenty. So it's been thirteen races since he's been on pole. Um, yeah, completely nuts. Yeah, he still holds a championship lead, so he's still doing what he's he's out driving his car. Let's be brutally honest. Um, that is a given. Um, and in comparing his teammate to himself, it's, um, yeah, quite a big gap. He is overdriving the car at times, um, but he has to. He has to. He's fighting for another championship. Uh, I believe he will be going for four in a row. And, um, yeah, he's got to fight as hard as he can because this is, besides 2021, which was his first one, and the best one, might I add, um, this is his biggest challenge yet. So I'm all for the gap between him and Norris getting smaller. Um, impressively, speaking of championships, um, Haas, uh, Kevin Magnussen finished seventh. Um, kind of shocking to say that. Um, but ever since, I don't know what the, like, obviously Toyota Gazoo have come on board as a technical partner. But ever since they've come on board, they've been pretty good. So I don't know what Toyota are really doing in the background, but whatever you're doing, it's working. Um, a double points finish for the American squad. Uh, Magnussen finishing seventh, as I said, and Hulkenberg finishing in P9. Um, yeah, crazy to think that that's, um, that's what's going on with Haas. You know, obviously, a couple of years ago, they were barely even letting him score points. And now, um, yeah regularly in Q3 with at least one car and, um, yeah, impressing everybody. And, uh, it's really, really good to see, uh, Oscar Piastri was the eighth finisher and he had an interesting weekend, uh, quickly discussed that he started the Grand Prix, I believe in 17th and, um, not really sure what happened in qualifying. Um, but I just hear, it, you know, it just wasn't very good or there was a mistake made somewhere. And, um, yeah, it was in the back foot and, um, Alongside him was um, Sergio Perez, who started 18th. He also had a bad qualifying, what's new. And, um, well, let's just say this. Piastri finished 8th, and Perez finished 17th. And they started next to each other. I really don't know what to say anymore. It's becoming a bit of a joke. Now, obviously, there was rumors with the new TV deal that um, Liberty Media wanted Perez to stay for the Mexican Grand Prix. Mexican Grand Prix has come and gone. Now what? The problem is for Red Bull is, look, I don't think they're going to make a third driver change in the one year. They've done crazy stuff in the past, but I don't think that that's one thing that they have in mind. So I think odds are that they're kind of well. Obviously, they're not going to come second in the champ. They're not. They're not even going to come second in the championship, let alone win the constructors' championship. Max Verstappen still can win the drivers' championship, but the constructors' championship is at the window, um, based on um, performances from McLaren and Ferrari. Which means they have a decision to make again, 
Perez cannot be in that car next year. They want to fight for world championships again before the new regulations. They're going to have to change something because the points... We'll go to the championship standings later, but the points are ridiculous. And this just proves it again. And another disastrous uh, Mexican Grand Prix for the home fan favorite. And um, yeah, not sure what's going to go on. But uh, we'll continue going through the field real quick. Uh, Pierre Pierre Gasly was the last points finisher for Alpine. Uh, Lance Stroll was 11th for Aston Martin. Um, Colapinto continues to impress in the Williams. Didn't have as good of a race as he has in the past, but you know, he had he's done so well so far that a 12th place to him would probably be bad, but for a rookie, it's probably pretty good. Um, Esteban Ocon was 13th. Um, Valtteri Bottas, 14th. Joe Guanyu, 15th. Liam Lawson um, was 16th. Uh, he had an interesting race, to put it lightly. Um, had an enormous battle with Sergio Perez, who was not happy with the Kiwis' performance. Uh, more in defending, not in the performance, but just the defending. And Liam was quite aggressive, but he did what other. I'm quite proud of Liam in the sense of he didn't do what other drivers do, which is complain. Uh, especially the European drivers, I find uh, whinges at some points. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Uh, Liam Lawson and Perez went side by side through the tight turn four, five sequence of corners. You could call it a chicane, but it's two separate corners. And there was hardly any room for both cars, but they got through. And Liam forced that. Liam proved that you can go through there side by side. He didn't do uh, Sorry. He didn't do what Lando did and cut the corner to avoid contact. He kind of actually forced his way through. And the move being on Perez kind of makes it a bit better in the fact that, you know, this guy is proving that he's better than him because they're both under the Red Bull family and someone's going to get Perez a seat, if not next year, the year after when his contract actually runs out. Hopefully it's next year. And Liam just shoved him out the way on the exit of turn five, but he kept him on the track. All of it was fair. And then Perez comes on the radio and saying, what's this, you know, D head doing. And I have, a yeah, I don't, I don't agree with Sergio at all. The guy's racing. Some drivers in formula one are racing drivers. Some of them, but all the politics gets in the way. And it's one thing I don't like about F1 and it's becoming too political and too whingy whiny. And what Liam Lawson did against Sergio Perez was outstanding. Unfortunately for Liam Lawson, later down the track, he had a similar situation being very close to another car and um, made contact with uh, Franco Colapinto, swiped out half his front wing, needed a change, and that's why he finished in 16th. And he still finished ahead of Sergio Perez in 17th. So just saying... You got Max Verstappen, who had 20 seconds worth of penalties. Perez, uh, sorry, Liam Lawson, who had to change his front wing. And they both still finished ahead of Perez. And I'm sure if uh, Yuki Tsunoda got past turn one, he would have finished ahead of Sergio Perez. Anyway, uh, the non-finishers were Alonso, who had an engine or some sort of issue with the car. And Alex Albon, obviously we mentioned before, and Yuki Tsunoda having a, a crash at turn one. But overall, the race was very entertaining. It was quite long. Obviously, the safety car period at the start didn't help. That lasted a good 10, 15 minutes. And um, yeah, from then, uh, it was yeah pretty much over from there. And uh, yeah, obviously, it makes the championship a lot more close. And we'll quickly go through the standings. Verstappen leads by 47 points ahead of uh, Leclerc. The gap between Verstappen and Leclerc is 71. Uh, Piastri is 111 behind, and Carlos Sainz is 122 behind. In terms of the team standings, it's McLaren, Ferrari now in P2, ahead of Red Bull, Mercedes, Aston Martin, Haas, RB, Williams, Alpine, and Sauber.